Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ray Santos. I am the Chief Development and Community Relations Officer for Ethos. And welcome to our Right Sizing Your Life presentation. Before we begin, I just want to take a quick moment to introduce Audrey Himmelhoek. She's our new um, GP at Home Member Services Coordinator. Um, you'll be able to find her. Um, uh, we sent out her email address, and um, we'll make sure to put her contact information in the chat box in case you're interested in any follow up to this presentation or have any questions about your JP to home membership or otherwise. Um, but Audrey, we want to just want to say hi quickly. Hi, everybody. It's so nice to see you and I'm looking forward to meeting you in person. And I'm very excited to um, get going on this. You know, it's just been this week and there's a lot to learn and I'm looking forward to it very much. Thank you. That's great, Audrey. Thank you so much. And with that, um, we'll start our presentation. I'm going to turn it over to um, my partner in crime and colleague here, um, Toddy Gelbspan from our JP at Home Advisory Council. Uh, take it away, Toddy. Just qu need quickly unmute. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Um, most of you are JP at Home members, so I'm not going to belabor much about the program. Just briefly, we are a, about 150 member strong program of Ethos. And as Ray said, he will talk a little bit about uh, a relevant program relevant to this topic that uh, Ethos provides our membership. Um, just some housekeeping, we're going to have people be muted um, until the question and answer program. And we ask that people save questions for the end. We're first going to hear from Amy Roberts from Out of the Box Moves, followed by Adam Shamas. He is a senior real estate specialist with the Muncie Compass Group. Um, and after them, we will hear from Ray about the long-term options counseling. And then we have a couple of JP at Home members who are gonna share their own experiences. We expect the program to take about 45 minutes. And then we will have um, Fabrian, um, the chair of the advisory council. She will introduce the couple of members and uh, manage the question and answer program. All right, so Amy, you're on. Thank you, JP at home for having me. Um, I'm a local, I'm a local move manager in this area. Um, I've had, I've enjoyed doing this um, for a very long time. It's been about 15 years. And today I am going to talk about downsizing and some, some of you may call it right sizing, but I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the emotional side of downsizing and give you some helpful tips on how to do it. So I'm going to take my screen off, my face off, and put my presentation up for you. Just wait one second. <laughs> Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. There we go. Okay, the emotional side of downsizing. Downsizing can be an emotional transition for older adults. Many of you have raised a family in your home and many of you have been in your home 30, 40, 50 plus years. During those years, you have collected your favorite things. There was a time it was popular to buy antiques or have a collection of Hummel figurines. And many people received China as a wedding gift or inherited China for a family member. We all 
love and cherish the items we have collected and or inherited over the years. But these are the things is, is what makes it so difficult for us to move. Let's talk about what would make the transition for moving easier. First, be empowered. At this time in your life, you can make your decisions on what to take with you and what to do what you don't and what to do with what you don't want. When working with a client, I always say, you are the only one making all the decisions. I'm here to expedite the process. Second, sentimental attachment is okay. We all have sentimental items that we want to bring. Although we can't bring them all, we can bring some. I had a client who was upset because she wanted to bring her grandmother's old couch, but it was in poor condition. So when the cleanout company came to take the couch away, I cut a small piece of that material off the side and put it in a shadow box for her. And now she'll forever have that little piece and memory of the couch. Thirdly, Bring familiar furnishings. Some clients want to go out and buy all new. Buying some things new is okay. You want to have familiar pieces surrounding you to make the transition easier. Fourth, plan in advance. Why wait to get started? If you've lived in your house for 30, 40, 50 years, I've already lived in my house 21 years. <laughs> we accumulate. So it's, it's time to get going and to find a new home for these items. It's always less stressful when you don't have to rush. I like to tell clients, try and downsize within your home, starting with the items in your cabinets and your closets. Next, these are a few of the items that I'll find in a home. When we start cleaning out bathroom closets, we will often find curlers and lots of them. Sometimes the person may not even use them anymore, like curling irons or even hair dryers. It's not unusual for me to find more than one iron, and usually there is only one that works. Wine glasses. I always find so many wine glasses tucked away on the top shelves of the kitchen cabinets. Can some of you relate to this? We all do these things. You're not alone. I myself have a lot of wine glasses on the top of my cabinet. We all collect items over the years, and we don't throw things out. So if we bought a new iron, we would tuck the old one away and start using the new one. This is what we did. So that is why I will often go into homes and clients will have several of one thing. Here are some of the questions to think about while you are sorting through your items. And these are the questions I will say to my clients and you can do the same to yourself. Do I use it? Do I really need it? Will you need your shovel and rake if you're moving to a rental property or you know, to a lease? Does it still work? Sometimes, like I mentioned, we're holding on to things that like blenders and phones, even old phones that no longer work, but we still keep them. And lastly, is it chipped or faded? If it's chipped or faded, it's time to get rid of it. Lots of people have a favorite teacup that is chipped, but they want to keep it because it's part of a set. It's okay to throw it out. We can have the 11th out of the 12 set <laughs> settings. Next, identify your belongings into five groups. This is what I do with all my clients. Keep, give to family members, sell, donate, and discard. Keep, these are the items that you need to keep and you should have first dibs on them. Sometimes I will have a client who will say, I love that piece of artwork, but my daughter or a family friend wants it. No, you are the first one to take it. This is going to make the transition smoother, smoother to have the items that you love. Give to family or friends. After you've done your floor planning, you know where things will go. Then you can ask your family or friends if they want anything. One very important piece here is give your family a deadline when they need to pick it up. <laughs> Often the kids will say they want it, but they don't plan on picking it up anytime soon. Sell, before you donate, have an antique dealer come in, someone that has knowledge about selling items, come to your home and see if it's worth selling before you donate it. Donate, keep in mind when you're donating, donating less fortunate people like nice things too. So if it's stained or ripped, please throw it out. If it's scratched or broken, please throw it out. 
It needs to be in good condition to donate. We all have good intentions of donating, but sometimes we need to realize that it's old and not in good condition to donate. Discard. These are the items I just mentioned above <laughs> that we have enjoyed for many years and now it's time to let go and throw it in the trash. Or you can always recycle metals, plastic, and paper. To keep me organized and for yourself to stay organized, use a color coding system. Use this color coding system. And this is what the colors represent when I'm doing it with my clients. Green is always to go with you. Red is to remove. That means it could be donate, trash, or sell. Orange, sometimes we need to put things into storage before we move. Blue, we can give to family or friends. They can come in and pick whatever they want once they see that red. <laughs> this is one little book that I love to go by. It's Marie Kondo, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, The Japanese Art of Decluttering and Organizing. If you tidy your house all at once, you'll rebound. It's better to make it a habit to do a little bit at a time. And that's why we're here today to talk to you about doing a little bit at a time. She's also about keep the things that you love. So if it brings you joy, you should keep it. Here are some helpful tips to get you started on your way. Categorize your belongings. One of my favorite tips from Marie is to put like items together. For example, put all your spatulas together or measuring cups or umbrellas flashlights, and so on. The list goes on and on. When you start putting like things together, you will see how many of the same things you have and choose the best one. Do one room at a time and start at one corner of the room and work your way around. You will see the accomplishment of what you have done. It's okay to have a maybe pile. Put it on the dining room table if you can't make a decision and look at it for a couple days and then make a decision. And then sell. What do we do with all those unwanted items? Like I mentioned before, there's antique dealers, there's book dealers, and estate sale planners. Antique dealers will discuss what you have first, then they may ask you to send some pictures of your items through email. Antiques are hard to sell. Keep in mind, things are not worth what they were in, when you bought them. For example, I did an article in the Boston Globe. It was about how brown furniture doesn't sell. And your family certainly doesn't want brown furniture anymore. It's, too, it's unfortunate. But this generation right now, they want to buy Ikea, Pottery Barn, Wayfair, Crate and Barrel, and so on. So although your furniture is probably built better, the younger generation who are buying furniture do not want it. They are looking for clean lines, white and bright, and a bit more modern. Book dealers. You can reach out to a book dealer if you think you have a collection of books that may be worth something. Typically you call them and they may ask you to send pictures of the binding of the book. They typically don't take books that have your personal writing on the inside and they have to be in good condition. Estate sale companies. Typically you have to have around eight to $10,000 worth of items to have in your house. That's not always the case. Call an estate sale company and tell them what you have and maybe they will come out to see your items and make a decision if you can have a sale or not. Donate, donate to charitable organizations. Here are just a few that we often use. Big Brother, Big Sister, Vietnam Vets, Salvation Army and Habitat for Humanity. Keep in mind, I always like to tell people that Starting out, sometimes if you schedule Big Brother, Big Sister or any of these organizations to come up for a pickup, just make put together one bag or one box of items. That's almost your deadline to get a few donatable items out. And one of my favorite organizations is More Than Words. You can donate mm -hmm. books to More Than Words in Waltham and in Boston. More Than Words is a nonprofit organization that empowers youth who are in the foster care system, homeless or out of school, who learn how to run a business, which is the bookstore that they have. Lastly is disposal. You can, call a re you can recycle your paper, 
You can call your town to find out when your hazardous waste day is, dispose of old medications at CVS, or shredding. Please make sure that you're always, you can call a company who comes to pick up to take your shredding away. And lastly, if you don't want to do any of that, you can call a clean out company. This is one of the clean out companies that I often use. It's called Clean, um, clean Out Your House, very appropriate. Um, so you can call them. And that is it. I hope you've learned a few tips to get started. So don't wait, start today. <laughs> Um, Amy. Yes. Could could you just give the uh, that book that was there because I didn't I didn't write it down the the author and the title of that book that you showed oh, us. Oh, sure. It's Marie Kondo. Is the name of the author, and we can go up on the screen again if you. Oh well, I'll just get it for you. Okay. Is it K O N D O? Yeah. K O N D O. Yes. And it's the life-changing magic of tidying up. Okay, thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I guess I will uh, just go into my presentation now. Hello, everyone. My name is Adam Seamus, and I am a seniors real estate specialist um, I work for Compass Realty in Chestnut Hill, and I work on a team there called the Muncie Group. And I'm going to be talking today a little bit about what a seniors real estate specialist is and why you would uh, look to potentially work with a seniors real estate specialist when you are right sizing out of the family home. And I really enjoy using that term right sizing more so than downsizing. And the reason for that is I find that downsizing, that word can have sort of a negative tone. And uh, it means, you know, it, 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 it means you're moving down. And I don't like that. You know, this is not a, a negative uh, process. It's not a, a something to be a, a upset about or, or be afraid of. This is a... Um, an exciting change and it's you're making a move for what's right for you in your life in this current time sometimes i have clients who are right sizing to a larger property not necessarily to a smaller property and so um, i like to use the word right sizing i just tend to find that it's more positive and uh, people smile a lot more when i say that as opposed to downsizing so um, just a quick little uh, blurb about me. As I mentioned, my name is Adam Seamus. I've been a realtor um, for just under 20 years. I'm originally from Newton, and uh, I have lived in Jamaica Plain now for 19 years. Um, I got into real estate, um, and shortly after I got into real estate, I realized that in order to uh, be successful in, in this job, I was going to need to do something to have sort of a, a, a focus in my, in my career, in my practice. And it took me a little while to think about what I could excel at and help people with. And at that time that I was thinking about this, my grandmother was going through a move of her own. She was living in Florida at the time she was a real estate agent herself um, in her career. And yet we would talk on the phone often and she would tell me how difficult it was for her to move. And I thought that was really interesting because here she was, she was an experienced realtor helping hundreds of clients over the years. And yet when it came time for her to move, she was dealing with some uh, unique challenges that um, you know a lot of other folks weren't having to deal with. And as I got thinking about that, I said to myself, gosh, I wonder if there is a, a specialty that focuses on working with seniors when they're thinking about making this change. And sure enough, I found that there is this designation through the National Association of, of Realtors called Seniors Real Estate Specialist. 
So I decided that that is what I wanted to spend my time on and focus on. And so um, what makes a seniors real estate specialist unique and different? I think the first and foremost, the, the biggest thing is an SRES, as I'm going to uh, uh, allude to them moving forward, um, really needs to have certain skill sets, personality traits, if you will, to be successful at this. Any real estate agent out there that's licensed in the state of Massachusetts can be hired to sell a home. Um, but what you want to do when you're working with a seniors real estate specialist is, um, is, is make sure that that person has great listening skills. It sounds crazy, but a, a good realtor is going to ask a lot of questions and then listen, just simply listen to the answers. Because ultimately what we want to do is we want to understand what you're going through, what the client is going through and, and put together a plan that is going to help achieve that client's goals. Another strong uh, piece of this is SRES agents tend to have a lot of empathy. You know, there's a lot of realtors out there who just want to sell as many properties as they can. Their goal is to have as many listings as they can, or their goal is to, to sell as many properties as they can. That is not my uh, MO. I really enjoy getting to know my clients, learning about their stories and finding out how I can help them. I've never been the type of person who is, a competitive, I need to have more listings than my colleague, no. And so a good SRES is going to have listening skills and they're going to be em em empathetic uh, to what people are going through in their, in their lives and in their situations. As, you, uh, as an SRES agent starts to, to build their practice and grow, um, they're going to start establishing great relationships with other vendors in the senior care community. For example, Amy and I have known each other for close to 15 years. And in fact, we, uh, I just referred Amy to uh, a client of mine. And so now we're gonna be working together on a deal um, in Newton. And so it's important that you, uh, when you hire an SRES agent, that SRES agent is going to have lots of great relationships with people in the senior care community, whether it's move managers like Amy, whether it's geriatric care managers, uh, estate attorneys, what have you, uh, having those relationships are gonna be very important. Um, also, and I'm gonna say this a couple of times in my presentation, but it's always what's in the best interest of the client. And that, again, that should just be common sense, but oftentimes it's not. But particularly in this case, when you're working with a, a senior client or their, and their family, their kids, what is in the best interest of the client? I will sit down sometimes with a, a, a would-be client and they'll say, I don't want to move. Well, I, I get that a lot. A lot of people don't want to move out of their homes. They love their homes. And if you can stay in your home, but be in a, do it in a safe way, I work with lots of home modification companies. So maybe there is a way that a home can be modified to make it safer for you to stay in the home. So it's always what's in the best interest of the client that has to come first um, when you're when you're working with an SRES agent, you have to make sure that they always have your best interests in mind. Uh, and then, of course, experience in this type of field. You want to make sure that as an SRES agent, they have experience and they they have a good um, experience working in a collaborative nature. Oftentimes, in this type of real estate, you're not only working with you know the attorney and maybe. Um, a, 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 not necessarily a loan officer in this case, but you know, you might be working with a move manager or the adult children are gonna be part of it, or maybe the uh, you know, a state clean out people. And so there's a lot of different people coming in and out that you wanna make sure that, um, you know, that, that you're working with. So you wanna make sure that you're working with an SRES agent that has great ex uh, experiences with that, has great um, uh, vendors that they work with and, and, and knows how to, sort of run that whole show. Um, I kind of like to use the analogy that sort of as a tree, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm the tree trunk. I'm brought in by a client and I'm referring out the branches like Amy or like an estate attorney or someone like that. Other times I'm the branch being brought in by someone else who's, who's the tree trunk. So, um, so when would you want to use an SRES? Okay, well, clearly if you are thinking about right sizing, 
then you want to start thinking about who am I going to hire to help me with my home? And what is so critical in this process, I, I always say this and I cannot stress it enough, is you want to be able to make this move when you still have the choice to do it and not when it's dictated to you. Even if that means making that move a year or two earlier than you might want. I've seen it time and time again over the years where people unfortunately wait too long and then there's a health crisis or a, a spouse or a, a significant other dies. And now all of a sudden you're forced to make this move and, it, and, and not, you don't have the choice. And so, you know, I applaud you all for coming and, and learning today and, and thinking, you know, wanting to learn more about this. So that's just something to keep in mind as we go through this. So uh, oftentimes I'll get called uh, by someone maybe a couple years away who is just starting to think about this process. Um, you know, where do we start? What can we do? It's, it can be a daunting process if you've been in your home for 50 or 60 years, extremely overwhelming. How do we even begin this process? So we sit down, we have a conversation, ask questions, listen, and be able to start to offer some advice on what you can do to try to start to, little by little, get your home ready for sale, whether that's uh, you know, a, a corner of a room at a time, start to declutter. Maybe it's painting. Maybe it's, hey, you know what? The roof is 50 years old and it really needs to be replaced. So there's a lot of different things that um, you know, can be done depending on your timeline. And so that's one uh, aspect where I'll get called in uh, a couple of years ahead of time and just sort of talk about the market in general and offer some thoughts. Um, the second scenario is where there's, it, it's more pressing. Uh, someone is needing to sell within the next few months. And in that case, um, again, maybe a spouse has passed away or is, is needing medical attention, no longer can be in the home. Um, or they're mo you're moving into a new home or a community, uh, like an independent or assisted community, and you need the money to, uh, from the home sale to, to pay for the new community. And so we get calls sometimes frantic. Oh my God, I, you know, I, I need to put my house on the market a ASAP, or I need to put my house on the market within the next couple of, of months. Um, and then the other scenario is uh, oftentimes uh, the client might already be out of the home. Um, and I'll get a call from a, an adult child living out of state. This is very common. You know, mom just moved to um, uh, memory care, independent community. Uh, we've, we've got this house. I don't live in the area. I have no idea what to do. And I'll go over and there'll, be, there'll still be lots of stuff in the home. Um, and so it's, it's a situation now where, where we have to figure out, you know, what to do and what's the best course of action. So... Um, so those are a couple of different types of scenarios of when, um, you know, when someone might call an, a seniors real estate specialist to, to help. Um, we will get referred by in-home care uh, companies, estate attorneys, financial folks, uh, geriatric care managers. These are the types of uh, folks that will reach out to me uh, when they might have someone who could use um, the assistance of a great, uh, great seniors real estate specialist. Um, how the process works. So as I mentioned earlier, um, the first part of this process is just an in-home consultation. And it's again, it's just asking a lot of uh, questions. And I really like to try to have all of the decision makers at that meeting. As we all know, uh, there are oftentimes there is more than one decision maker that's involved in part of, as part of this process. Adult children might be involved, um, an, an attorney might be involved. And sometimes, I hate to say it, but sometimes not everyone's goals are aligned and that can be very challenging. And so ultimately we wanna make sure everyone is on the same page about how to move forward and what we're going to do to achieve the client's goals. So we ask a lot of questions, we'll sit down. Um, and it's, it's just a lot of, um, you know, tell me about what, what, what's important to you about this house, what your needs are, what your timeline is, what you wanna do, what, where do you wanna go? A lot of those types of questions, what's important to you um, and, and always keeping that in mind about what's in the best interest. This is obviously a very emotional experience. 
Um, I often tell my clients that, look, I cannot help remove the emotion from this process. Uh, look, I've been in my home for 20 years. If I had to sell it, it would be an extremely emotional process. For, so for so, someone who has raised children in a home, has been in their home for 50 or 60 years, it is a extremely, extremely challenging and emotional, difficult process to think about selling your home. What I try to do and what a good seniors real estate specialist is gonna to try to do is to remove the stress from your shoulders. I can't do anything about the emotion. You are going to be emotional about it. But if I can make the journey smoother by working with all these other individual people to, to, to achieve the common goal, then what I try to do, I try to make it as stress-free a process for the client, for their family as possible. Um, so uh, we, uh, as I mentioned, we ask questions, we, get, we, we find out what is important and then we can make recommendations. So putting together a plan. Okay, so um, oftentimes people will say to me, I, you know, I don't want to, I, I, I want to sell my home, but I don't want to have strangers in the home, or I don't want a for sale sign in my yard. Um, or, you know, I, I, I don't, I just don't want to do anything to my house to, 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 you know, paint it or to make any uh, changes. And so there are lots of different ways that a seniors real estate specialist can work with you to sell your home. Um, you know, there's the, the normal way where you put it on, on the on MLS, the multiple listing service. We take photos, we do open houses and tours, and, um, and we sell it what's called the, the public way, publicly. We get a lot of people in there we, to look at it and, and make offers. But we can also do private sales. So if, if you are, uh, you know, if you're not interested in having a lot of people through the house, um, or if the home is, it, if it's an older home and if it needs a lot of work and we understand that it needs a lot of work, maybe it would be better to sell it privately to either someone who will buy it and fix it up to live in it or to um, a, a, an investor or something like that. So again, it's really about understanding what's important to the client, what, what their needs are, and then crafting a plan that is going to work for them within their timeline. So those are, uh, those are important things to keep in mind. And then, um, you know, there's different, uh, with each type of uh, different way to go about it, there's, uh, there's also different things underneath. So for example, if you're selling it publicly with, uh, you know, on, online, the commission that you're going to pay is going to be different than if you're selling it privately, um, where the realtor is not going to need to do as much marketing, photos, those types of things. So, you know, these are all questions that you're going to want to talk to your, the, the, the seniors real estate specialist about um, if you choose to, to go that route. Um, now, different realtor companies might have different programs that can help you um, with, with different elements of this. Um, you know, I, to not, not to get too specific, but there are some companies out there that can help with bridge loans, for example. Um, so if you need to sell your home and need that money in order to buy your next home, that's, you can get a bridge loan. So there are some companies that can provide bridge loans. There are some companies, uh, realtor companies that offer programs where you could get a, a interest-free loan up front if you needed to do some work to the home. And they could also help pay for uh, the property that you're moving into. A lot of times, for example, my clients will not be able to move until they sell their home. And yet that's tricky because we wanna get as many people into the home as possible to get the best offer, um, and, and, but it could be challenging because people don't wanna leave their homes. And so this, you know, there are programs out there where if you can get money up front to move first and then do some work to the house, that is a win-win for everyone. So when you're talking to different seniors real estate specialists, ask them about different programs that they might have or that they might know about that could be of help to you if you're going through this process. Uh, finally, I wanted to just go over some questions that you might wanna ask your seniors real estate specialist when you're interviewing them for the job. 
Um, just like anything, you know, you wanna you wanna make sure you feel comfortable with the person you hire to to do this for you. Uh, you can interview different people, but here are a couple of good questions. First is, of course, are you a seniors real estate specialist? That's that's very important. What towns do you specialize in? You obviously want to make sure you hire a realtor professional that works with buyers and sellers in the community that you live in and know. Um, how do you communicate with clients? That's very important. Um, some clients like to be uh, communicated with by phone. Others like to be emailed or texted. So how do you communicate with clients? How often do you communicate with clients? Do you have at least three references that you can provide? I would imagine that, you know, just like when you're, uh, you know, buying a car, doing something else, when you wanna, you wanna get references, you know, you wanna make sure that the person you're thinking about working with and hiring uh, is, 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 has good reviews. Uh, why did you choose to become an SRES? That is a question that a lot of SRES agents will be happy to answer. Um, as I told you, you know, my, my choice comes from a family and, and, and helping people, that's very important. So you want to make sure that you know an SRS agent can answer that. Um, and then finally, what kinds of relationships do you have in the senior care community? As I alluded to earlier, that's going to be an important part of this. So um, just you know, in closing, th those are some important things to keep in mind. Um, at the end of the day, you know, a good SRS agent is going to have these types of relationships that are going to want to come from a place of helping patience, good listening skills, and, and, uh, and be able to uh, come up with a plan that is going to make you uh, happy, whether again, that's staying in the home and modifying it to help you, or if it's helping you find a, a new property and help sell the current one that you're in. So I hope that was, uh, that was informative. I know there's a lot of information. I'm happy to uh, answer any questions at the end of this. Thank you so much for, for listening. Thanks, Josh. Uh, just bear with me here. So I'm next up. My name is Ray Santos. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm the Chief Development and Community Relations Officer for Ethos. Um, my goal in over the next couple minutes is just to give you a brief overview of a program that's available to all older, older adults and family members. Um, it is called the Options Counseling Program. Um, the Options Counseling Program provides seniors um, over 60 and um, individuals with disabilities of any age, um, as well as their, um, their caregivers or family members, information on the, you know, the information that they need uh, on long-term services and supports in order for them to be able to live independently in their community, regardless of disability or income. Options counselors are trained um, specifically to work with you, your family members, and our significant others to connect you to those vital resources and services that fit your current situation, your preferences, and allow you to remain in your home, in your community, where you want to be. The Options Counseling Program is a free service. Um, it's funded by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Executive Office of Elder Affairs and the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission. Um, and it's offered through the Suffolk County Aging and Disability Resource Consortium of which Ethos is a member of. Um, options counselors advise people who are soon to be discharged from a hospital or a rehab facility, have been admitted to a long-term care facility following a hospital stay, um, they, you know, who may be facing, you know, admission or, um, you know, the prospect of res residing in a nursing facility um, or those who, you know, live in the community um, and want to remain in the community and, and need additional assistance. Um, an options counselor helps you develop your own personal long term care plan and connects you with those options that you might need down the road or immediately. Um, so you could be in a nursing home, you could be, you know, in a hospital, you could be in a rehab facility, you could be living in a community setting, or you can be living in a, in your own home. Um, uh, options counselors are able to assist you. Um, you know, the common questions that options counselor try, common, uh, com counselors like try to answer are, you know, can I live in the community safely and independently? You know, what services and supports are available to me in my home? 
Um, can I go to a rehab facility or nursing home temporarily and then return home? Um, what services, assisted devices, um, home modifications are available to support me in my own home? And you know, can I what give me a sense for what my insurance will cover? If not, what other funding sources might be available for services and supports? Um, once again, um, you know, they they serve the options counselor serves anyone age sixty and over. Um, you know, anyone who has a any age who has a disability, and also family members and caregivers. So we often get family members and and caregivers who are the primary contact for um, options counselors. Um, and just a few things to remember, um, you know, options counselor provide, provide unbiased information about long-term services and support. So they don't have any skin in the game, they're just there to present you with all the information as possible. They can assist um, individuals or family members make referrals and identify resources that they need. Um, they are able to help identify resources that are available to pay for services. Um, you know, and they're, you know, they're, they make referrals to experts in the field for the particular issue. Um, they really take a consumer driven approach um, that makes that ensures that, you know, your individual choices and those of your household are respected. And then they follow up with you to make sure that, um, you know, their your plan is being put into place um, along the way. It, oftentimes, captions counselors might make referrals to um, you know, home care services or other resources. They may even make recommendations to individuals to join, um, you know, affinity groups or JP at home. Um, so they, they're really there to be able to give you a lot of a different ideas um, and help point the way. Um, if you have questions about Ethos's options counselor um, counseling program or wish to make an, um, uh, an appointment, uh, you can visit our website, um, www.ethocare.org. You can also email optionscounselor at ethocare.org. Um, I'm happy to put that in the in the chat box. Um, and you may also call our, um, and this service is available anywhere in Massachusetts through a number of different agencies. Ethos just happens to oversee the program for um, Southwest Boston and, and beyond. Um, and with that, I'm gonna turn it over to um, Fabrian Rosen, who will lead the Q&A portion of this presentation. Okay, thank you. Um, well, first, um, I'd like to introduce Sonia uh, Michelson, who is one of our new members of JP at Home. And um, she's going to share with us some of her experiences. She has downsized um, from a large home, I believe it was in Newton, um, to a condo in JP. And uh, is, so Sonia, I'm gonna turn it over to you to share your experience and, and what you're looking at now. Oh, thank you, Fabrienne. At first I have to start with an apology because as I indicated to you before, I'm probably going to have to leave this in just a minute or two, but um, um, let me let me say to you that uh, I've done it and I've survived it, so that's the good news. Uh, we downsized from a house that we had lived in for 52 years and moved to um, a condo here in Jamaica Plain. Uh, I will uh, uh, say that it was a tremendous amount of work. Uh, we discovered uh, a tremendous number of things, some of which had value and some of which uh, we chose, most of which we chose not to keep. Uh, it would not have been possible without the help of a moving helper manager who um, stayed with me and us in our house, um, came on a regular basis when I say stay, and uh, helped to pack, uh, to go through closets and shelves and boxes and helped me to look at things and say, do I want this? Is do I not want it? And if I want it, do I, how much do I want it? And should it go into this box that it's going to go either to be donated or to be um, put out, put out for trash. Um, it, it's, I think I would just say to people who are facing this that um, um, it's, um, can actually be a very rewarding piece of work 
to um, look at what's in your house and what's accumulated and what's in your life and that which has value and that which, that which does not have value and to be able to move on lightly um, or lighter with a lighter load. Um, not an everyday event in any of our lives, but an important one and I think a useful one. So I'm sorry that I can't stay with the conversation today. Yes, but we very much appreciate your sharing that. Um, that is very, very helpful. Um, and thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, we also have another member, uh, Deborah Malone, who has been a member for a long time. And I, Deborah, I'm not sure how long ago it was that you decided to right size, but uh, you can share that with us and, and what your experience was. We what moved, you can suggest. Yeah. My husband and I moved to Boston to retire in 2004 so that we could take care of some grandchildren and they're pretty much grown up now. 16 and 20. Um, we lived in a triple decker. Uh, we had three bedrooms, a large kitchen, a large dining room, and a good sized living room. And I was a geriatric nurse. I did home visiting at the end of my career. And uh, I realized we were still doing well when we decided to move, but it's better to move before you need the help. So we moved, we we're at Sophia Snow residences and sure enough, we got older. I'm 80 now. Things happened to my body that didn't happen before. And I'm very grateful we moved because there's help available if we need it. Um, we get cleaning services if we want. The snow is cleared off from our car, the lawn is mowed. Uh, we have a lot more time to do things we like to do. Um, I would um, piggyback a bit on Amy Roberts about moving. Don't wait to start sorting out. Because we've moved 11 times actually um, because of my husband's career and my going to grad school. And we have learned something about ourselves. No matter where we live, we fill up the space and then we overfill the space. And then we have to Pair it all down and start again. So we've had some experience in paring down, but golly, it is really hard to let go of those adorable little hand drawings the kids did when they were five and six. But do we need a hundred of them? Or can we pick <laughs> one or two that are really special? So um, be patient, move along and be empowered, as Amy said. It's your power, it's your belongings, if you have to fight with your husband, do it. <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> we really, um, do I use it? Do I need it? Does it work? Or is it in poor condition? Those are great questions. I recommend them to you. Just keep going. Do a little at a time. Um, and then I want to say something about um, choosing a moving company. They're not all the same. They all make great statements about what they can do for you. If you have friends who have moved uh, in this area and you can ask them about their moving experience, please do that. Um, I would say the questions to ask are, will you really arrive on time? Will you really pack things carefully? And if you don't and things are broken, will you be responsible? Uh, we had an excellent moving company, name I mentioned. But when we arrived at our new place, uh, our biggest um, uh, piece of chair furniture wouldn't work anymore. Lazy boy. If you have a lazy boy and you can't move anything in it, what are you going to do? So we called the company and they said, oh, yes, we have experts that deal with that. And they sent someone over within a couple of days and repaired it right here in the house. And we were set to go. So I think that's important. If they drop a box of, of your favorite china and it's all in smithereens, which did not happen, you need to have some compensation for that. Um, and, and preferably you don't have an icy rainy day. 
Um, the other thing about moving, I think that's really helpful is if you can, um, you, you know the square footage, but if you can have a diagram of the rooms where the windows are, and, and there are um, uh, these programs on, com on a computer that you can use to, to put the measurements on so you know how much space you have, what windows or doors you have to work around, and where will your furniture go? So on the day of moving, you can be the command person standing in your new place and you say, put the sofa over there and put the dining room table right here and everything will be in place at the end of the day, even if you still have boxes to settle. Um, otherwise, what I wanna say is the personal things are the hardest to pare down and books. If you have four walls lined with books and you haven't read many of them for five or six years, I'd advise you to pare them down and give them away uh, because lots of things are in the library. So uh, leave yourself with some extra empty space when you finally move in because you will collect more things. And you probably don't need 12 plates of dinner service unless you're moving into a comparable or larger size because in smaller places, it's more likely to be four or six people that you're feeding. So um, yeah. I'd say, otherwise, be glad you're wise enough to move simply and before you need it. Thank you, Deborah. Those are some really good suggestions. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a couple of comments. Um, one, um, Allison pointed out that uh, when you're moving, if you have any unwanted medications, you can bring those to local police stations, which I think is very important rather than um, putting them in the garbage or down the drain. Um, a question for Adam is, um, do you help, uh, and I guess this would also be for Ray, um, does, do you as um, the senior uh, realtor person or does the um, options counseling program and help people decide where they need to go and what the different types of facilities are that are available to them? And could Adam, you talk about some of the different facility types that people would have um, uh, options in, in looking at? Yes, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> the first part of that question is, um, as, as, as a seniors real estate specialist, I like to be I like to know about the local communities in our area. So whether those are independent living communities, assisted living communities, memory care communities, continuing care communities, which incorporate all three. Um, I like to be able to know of those communities. So if someone says to me, hey, I'm looking for something, you know, within a, a, a five mile radius of Jamaica Plain that's independent. I could say, okay, here, here are three that you could go look at. I am not a geriatric care manager. Um, and so I am not, I, I do not, um, I would not be comfortable recommending to people specific communities to look at um, and say, I think this would be good for you. But if someone said, could you give me the names of a few? I could say, certainly here are the uh, sales managers or the community uh, managers at these different uh, communities and you can give them a call. Um, so that that hopefully answers that first part of the question. Um, oftentimes when I'm working with a client and they are right sizing, one of a couple of things is happening. They're either moving in with family members um, into a home either locally or out of state, or they are moving into an independent community, an assisted community or a memory care facility. Um, and uh, just very quickly, an independent community is where you can either buy or rent a, um, a, 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 an apartment 
one or two bedroom apartment with a full kitchen. Um, and they have, you know, there's, um, there's programs, there's uh, usually a restaurant, there's gym, pool, what have you. Um, and you can come and go as you please. You, you can still have a car and there's parking. Um, there's a lot of those types of communities locally. Uh, and in a, uh, an assisted community is very similar. Oftentimes they are, are uh, one and the same. Some of the rooms will be assisted, some will be independent. And that is, you know, instead of a full kitchen, maybe now you have just a kitchenette. You're not really cooking your own meals anymore. You're going to the, uh, the, the restaurant within the community for your meals. And you can have um, uh, services which will help with um, uh, medications and, and other things if you need, if you need help with other, other things as well. And then of course, memory care is a much more uh, strict uh, facility where, um, you know, it's, it's for folks who are, who are going through some memory loss and, and all that entails. Um, so, so there are all kinds of different uh, options. Um, and yeah, absolutely. Yes. I, I, I try to keep myself educated and knowledgeable about the local options, but I wouldn't necessarily be the one who would be taking someone to these different places, uh, to look at those communities, but I could certainly refer, uh, clients to the names of people who, who are there, who, who can give those tours and answer those questions. Thank you, Adam. Mm -hmm. um, that's, yeah, Irene, that's, a, great. that's a great question. Um, options counselors are uh, trained to really understand what um, kind of living options are available within the, the community that they're serving. So um, for example, uh, options counselor at Ethos is is trained to be familiar with um, all of the different care facilities from nursing to assisted to independent care, um, as well as um, senior housing and other subsidized housing. They may also be knowledgeable um, and up to date on particular waiting lists, uh, application processes, um, income limits and asset um, guidelines. Um, and really more better understanding what the best fit for you and your family or household, um, you know, either in the short term and the long term. Um, you know, it's a free service. So, you know, I definitely recommend folks um, call, make an option. You know, it's always great to have that conversation with with our options counselor um, just to better understand what the landscape is. And, and it changes constantly. Um, that's the other thing that I think is really important, um, you know, uh, independent living, senior assisted living, senior housing um, are very, very short in supply. So you really have to be, you know, constantly be aware of what's available um, and uh, take advantage of opportunities as they as they come. Great, thank you. Um, I asked a question in person to Michael. He told me to type it in, but I'd like to ask them directly. Sure. Go ahead, and Edna. And now I was just about to call on you. Okay, just an aside, Deborah. I am planning to move into Sophia Snow and to Raymond uh, and to uh, Tony. Uh, I'm planning to move into Sophia Snow within the next six months. Uh, but uh, Adam, the reason I wanted to speak to you directly is I am just beginning to undertake this journey and. I wanted to ask whether you had heard I had planned to hire Wayforth. Have you heard of Wayforth, which is affiliated uh, also with AARP to move me, to pack me, to unpack me, to even getting the dimensions of the uh, apartment that I'm going into, in, which will be 240, Deborah in um, uh, Sophia Snow, whether you had heard from them because they had such a comprehensive service. And the other thing is, I wanted to know if you've ever heard of Realogy, R-E-A-L-O-G-Y, which is also an affiliated organization with AARP and they help apparently to find realtors for uh, people. But you are working in the suburban area and I live in Mattapan, which is right in Boston, the heart of Boston. 
So I did not, I was not aware there was a specialty of senior real estate specialists. I wish I'd known about that, but um, I don't know if you specialize in, in uh, you know, certain areas, but have you heard of Wayforth and have you heard of Realology? Both are a ARP uh, affiliate. Uh, well, thank you for the question, Edna. Um, I have heard of Realology. Um, I, I don't really know a whole lot about them, uh, but yes, I have heard of them. Um, Wayne Ford, I believe, is another, uh, is, is a move manager. Maybe Amy could speak more on that. Um, uh, but a lot of these move management companies will offer lots of different services depending on your, your needs and your budget. Um, as far as the locations of where I work, uh, my business, I would say, is mostly within a, uh, a five to 10 mile radius of Jamaica Plain. Uh, so even though my office is in, uh, is in Chestnut Hill, I do a, a good amount of business in Boston. As I mentioned earlier, I, I live in Jamaica Plain. I've been a JP resident for many years. So I, you know, a lot of, a lot of business in JP and Rosendale and, and greater Boston, mm -hmm. as well as the suburbs. That doesn't include Mattapan, though. No, it does. I, Greater Boston. I've I've worked in Mattapan. Absolutely, Mattapan, Roxbury, Dorchester, uh, all over Boston. Okay. Thank you. Does that answer your questions, Edna? Yes. Yes. It says that he's available in this area. It's okay. just another person. I. The information is tremendous. I just wish I'd gotten it two weeks ago, <laughs> but um, I haven't hired a realtor, but I've been undergoing searching uh, for all of this information since I've lived in my house 47 okay. years. So Great. I know whereof you speak. Okay. And uh, I have no relative Thank that you. here. So I'm doing this largely on my own. And that's why I was asking. Great. Now, I'm wondering, uh, we are getting um, to the closing hour, but I'm wondering if uh, uh, shortly, unless I have my, my clock wrong, um, but uh, I'd like to know if there are any other questions for any of the people, um, Adam, Amy, Ray, um, if anyone has um, a question, uh, Josh. Hi, I uh, mostly had a comment. Well, I uh, I work with Adam and was really excited to hear and, and watch this. Um, and I had uh, one other thought. It's less about SRES, but I thought it could just be helpful in terms of like for everybody, like when you're thinking about this process, no matter what realtor you hire, um, uh, uh, just to know that, um, Deborah, you were saying like, start early, you know, like it often takes a little longer than you think and, and all those things. One other thing to think about in terms of, um, like, when do you engage with a realtor? Like at, at what phase that I thought a lot of people might appreciate this. So, um, a realtor will tell you like sometimes when you think about there's some people that are going to put their home on the market that are thinking well i'm going to have to do this i'm going to have to fix this before i put it on the market or i'm going to have to fix that before i put it on the market and then sometimes they'll start you might hire some contractors um but it's really important to consult with a realtor before you start doing any of that because they'll be able to tell you oftentimes there are some things that you don't need to do. They're not going to make you money on the sale per se. And there are some things that, that can help. And obviously a good realtor will, will provide a full service and help facilitate any of that work being done, which can take time off of your hands. Um, and so like an example I can think of, we, we, we have a client who's um, in the process of right sizing. They have a single family home in the pond side area. And when they brought us in, they all were already mentioning that they um, had reached out to a, a few exterior painters. 
Um, I looked at the house and I was thinking to myself, this is okay. Like, I, like, I don't know that that will, it's not that bad that it'll. So long story short, it's just wanted to just add that one piece of information that sometimes like, uh, uh, don't assume that you have to spend all this money in advance, or at least get that consultation up front because it, it might save you money, um, or figuring out that having whichever professional you hire, a good plan and strategy can be beneficial up front and early. Mm -hmm. Good point. Can we get Adam's number? Can we get Adam's number? Yeah, we'll be sharing all of the information from and this. Deborah, uh, would you mind if I called you to ask you how you like Sophia Snopes as I'm moving there? <laughs> Deborah, I'm happy to connect you and Edna offline just so you don't right. have to share your info here. That would be great. Any other questions? Um, if you could uh, uh, just raise your hand by by clicking on reactions and uh, hands will come up because otherwise I won't see you. Um, uh, I don't know, Ray, can you see any other hands or? Um, yeah, I don't no see any questions. other questions. Um, obviously, if there's anybody who has questions, you feel free to send them our way. We'd be happy to forward them to any of the folks on this call today. That's great. Any comments that people want to make? One, one that yeah, I I was gonna. Oh, um, I was gonna say add one thing. <clears throat> Those of us who did start before we needed to, which is a, a point emphasized over and over again, and I can't emphasize it more strongly. So we knew that we were not going to go to a planned community, but we were looking for like a condo after moving out of the big house, figuring out what the trade-offs are but by going to open houses. I did that for several years, and that's how I was able to figure out what our priorities were what and what is feasible. And so when the right thing came along, we recognized it and we were able to act on it. And uh, it, it turned out to have been a, a good thing and some advice I'd, I'd like to share. And uh, anybody else? Because I was otherwise going to just thank everybody and, and close us out. Anybody else? Fabrian? Hey. I don't just one comment that uh, was made um, acknowledging uh, Deborah that uh, moving companies are not all the same. <laughs> so, you know, we've some of us who have moved a couple of times have had that experience. I know I have uh, twice and uh, one mover was outstanding and the other mover even though I asked some of the same questions and they were not terribly honest. So um, that is a, a, an important point. Uh, I just I just did want to take one moment to to just thank um, Josh Muncie and Compass Real Estate, yep. who have been longtime um, business members of JP Home and supporters of J the JP Home program um, for many, many years. Very much appreciate your support and certainly your insight um for today's presentation so thank you so much for that yes yes Amen. and i'll turn it over to you toddy for well it's closing. just to thank everybody and uh hope it's been helpful it has been recorded um and uh, there were only a few non-members on this presentation if you have more questions please follow up i think ray is going to post contact information so get back to us. We have a supportive community where we're helping. We're about 150 members strong and we have a good time together and uh, we welcome new members. Thank you. And yes, I will just add to that, that if anybody uh, would like to inquire more uh, about becoming a member of JP at Home, please feel free to uh, contact um, uh, well, Ray's put the ethos information on with a phone number. So ask for Audrey and she will be able to help you out. Um, and uh, 
I too want to thank all of you and um, this has been fun. Yeah, thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.